Welcome to Honest News. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Thank you for your support, Honest News Network. I've been born Okay, we're going to be finishing up on the previous lesson, hearing God's voice or knowing God's voice in the storm. We're going to finish up with the second part. Without question, we are in a storm. And we're going to see in the coming days emotions running very high. Are you listening? We're going to see a real test of character. Going to see those that truly have the character of Christ and those that don't because our faith is going to be tested in the fire. It's being tested, but it's going to be even more so in the coming days. The Lord warned that when the storm came, not if, but when. And we see in the scripture that everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And only that which cannot be shaken shall remain. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word, James chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. James chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you, Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust, you have not, you kill, you desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. I just wanted to say that this is a different kind of a storm than Paul the Apostle was dealing with. Amen? This is much different in the sense that we are dealing with an inward storm and not an outward storm. In the previous lesson, we learned that Paul was in a physical storm and he had a word from God in that storm. And now we're receiving and understanding God's voice in the storm that he is dealing with his people to deal with that storm on the inside. Amen. Don't allow the storm on the outside to get on the inside. You lust, you have not, you kill, Desire to have, cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. I will tell you, this many times is what leads to the storm on the inside. Because you ask not. And many ask, but they ask amiss. Because their motive's not right. Amen? When they pray. Their motive's not right. The the intent of their heart's not right. Amen. 
Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now we dealt with this in the previous message. This is part two, so we're not going to go into these verses. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But God giveth more grace. Aren't you glad the Lord gives more grace? His grace is sufficient. And the grace that God gave you in the past is not going to be enough for what you need in the days ahead. You need more grace. You need more peace, more joy. You need to be filled with more of the Spirit. Amen? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. So you're not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive more grace if you're proud. If you're too proud to admit, you need more. So humble yourself and admit to God, I don't have it all. How many today are being taught they got it all when they got saved? Such a damnable teaching. Once saved, always saved. Got it all when I got saved. There's more. There's a whole lot more. Amen? If God's people could only understand how much more there is, don't limit God. Amen? He giveth more grace. How many know where sin abounds, the grace of God does much more abound? Sin will never abound more than God's grace. It's not that God's grace is not abounding even in this hour. It's that people choose sin over God's grace. They make a choice. They choose to disobey God, or they choose to not believe God. Anything that's not of Faith is sin. So if you're not believing God, that's sin. That's your choice. But God's grace is abounding, brothers and sisters, in the storm. In this storm we're in right now, God's grace is sufficient. It's enough. It's all we need. But we need more of that same grace and truth which is in Jesus Christ, right? Jesus is. He is grace and truth. Amen. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace. And let's just say this. He giveth more grace unto the humble. Amen. I want to say that again to emphasize, you need more grace than you needed yesterday for the days ahead. If you think you're going to make it on the grace you had from in the past, you're not going to make it because there's greater trials, there's greater tests, there's greater obstacles, there, there's greater devils to deal with, bigger devils, uh, greater temptations, there's uh, greater storms ahead. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Things are not going to get easier if you don't accept God's grace. You need more grace for the trials ahead, for the battles ahead. This is so important to understand, brothers and sisters. So important to understand. He giveth more grace. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. Let's receive that from the Lord today. He giveth more grace. Amen? He provides to you and I all we have need of. But why don't we have what we need? He says, because you ask not. But when you do ask, you ask with pride. 
with the wrong motive, with the wrong intent. Amen? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you're proud, you will not be submitting yourself to God. So you got to humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself. Could spend a lot of time right here. God gives grace to the humble. Did you know Jesus was already humble? But he humbled himself. He was already humble. But he humbled himself, even unto the death of the cross. So even though you may be humble, there's still, there's still the responsibility of humbling ourselves. Paul said he became all things to all men that he may save some. So even though you may be humble, there's still the responsibility of humbling ourselves. Amen. Praise the Lord being a servant. Can't even be a servant until you're humble. But you got to humble yourself to be a servant. How many know that? How many know this is a proud generation? Huh? This is a proud generation. And they use that word. I'm proud. Amen. God's people should never use that word pride. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. Huh? To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Man's not supposed to be receiving glory. And Jesus said, you that receive glory one of another, or you that seek man's glory... You can't receive the glory that only comes from God. So don't expect it. No flesh shall glory in his presence. Amen. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How many know that's the storm that's on the inside? The devil brings that storm. But the storm's not going to flee from you. Just because you're resisting. Just because you're resisting a contrary wind in a storm doesn't mean you're going to overcome it. Amen. You got to submit yourself to God in the storm, resist that storm or resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Do you believe that? Do you really believe this truth? And he will flee from you. Do you really believe that? No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. Do you believe the coronavirus will flee from you? Huh? Even while you're out there among people, yeah, you do your part, you social distance, you wash your hands, you wear gloves and masks, do everything you can do on your part. If you'll submit yourself to God, you know, you don't go out there and act like you're immune. No. You humble yourself. You walk in humility. Amen. You do your part. You be an example to those around you. And when people aren't wearing masks and people aren't wearing gloves and you have the means, you, you wear them. And let them know it's a serious situation. Amen. I had to get after one of my daughters the other day because, or yesterday, because 
She was visiting a friend, next door neighbor. I says, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to be visiting friends. Amen. And she understood. When I helped her to understand how serious the situation is. But if you think you're going to go out there amongst those that are infected and not get infected walking in pride, you are sadly mistaken. Amen. Just like you need to do everything you can do on your part to stay clean. Whatever you got to do on your part. You know, this charismatic idea today that God does it all. We have a part in this, too. We got to do our part. Amen? I found that out with my pastor. All those years of strong, strong amounts of white sugar finally caught up with him. All those years of eating red meat not cooked well because he liked it not cooked. It caught up with him. Whole body full of cancer. In his bones. In the marrow. Amen. And you know, if I would have known what I know now, I would have told my pastor, stop eating sugar. If I would have known what I know now, I would have told my mother, stop eating sugar. I lost both my pastor and my mother to cancer. So there's something we can do on our part, and we should. You should be building your immune system in this time. Vitamin D and vitamin C. Taking care of yourselves. Amen, people. Trying to get to a place where I can pray. Praise the Lord. But we've got to submit ourselves. We really do, people. I know this is not popular, but listen. God, he resists the proud. Think about that. Here we are supposed to be resisting the devil, and God is resisting us because we're not submitted to God. That's a serious thing. Not only is the devil not fleeing from you, but God's resisting you. You ever thought about that? I've shared with you messages about God says, I'll come and I'll fight against you. Jesus said, I'll come and fight against you if you don't repent. Amen. How important is it to be humble and to humble ourselves? Amen. Now, I'm trying to get to a place to pray and get to the second part of this message. So I'm going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. And your grace is sufficient, Lord, more than sufficient. We love the grace of God. We love your presence. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you so much for giving to us your grace. But, Lord, we realize in the storm we need more grace, more than we've ever had in the coming days. Lord, we need your grace. We ask, Lord, that you bless and anoint this message as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. There is a way out of this place you may be in if you have become like those James was speaking to. 
You don't have to stay in that place. You don't have to stay there. Amen? You don't have to stay in that condition of an adulterer or adulteress. You don't have to stay as an enemy of God in that place where God's resisting you and he's coming and fighting against you. How many know when you're trying to be successful without submitting yourself to God, you wonder, how come I can't seem to be successful? How come I can't seem to, everything I do, it seems like it fails? Well, it could be that God is resisting you for your own good. But if you don't get the lesson, if you don't learn, you could end up where God fights against you. You don't want that. You don't want God fighting against you. Because you could believe that it's the devil fighting against you. Think about that. How twisted and how backwards people get. I'm serving God in pride. I'm resisting the devil. And the devil's fleeing from me. And when in reality, what's really happening is you're not serving God. You're not submitted to God. And you're not resisting the devil. It's just the opposite, people. And the devil's not fleeing from you. That's what's going on today. There's a lot of folks that think they're serving God. And they wonder why they can't seem to overcome the obstacles in their lives. If you would just submit yourself to God, and resist the devil, it would change everything. That would be a game changer. But see, most do not want to submit themselves to to God. They want to do it their own way. Amen. Most of God's people do not want to live a disciplined life. They don't want to deny themselves and take up their cross daily. They want to seek to save their life instead of losing it. But I I want you to understand, people, there is a life of victory in Jesus when you are submitted to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not what you want to hear. It's what you need to hear. Draw nigh to God. Why would James have to tell God's people to draw nigh to God? Why would you have to tell God's people to draw nigh to God? Well, he just got done telling them that they are adulterers and adulteresses, that they are friends with the world. That's why they're not drawing nigh to God. If you ever find yourself not drawing near to God, you can mark it down. There's a reason why you're not drawing near to God. Amen. We should be drawing near. Hallelujah. While the world today is running from God, you and I should be running to him, drawing near to God. And the promise of that is that God will draw near to us. See, it doesn't work the other way around. You want God to draw near to you, but you're not drawing nigh to God. Don't get that backwards. God's not going to draw near to you until you draw nigh to him. Amen. Now, why would God's people have to be told to cleanse their hands? Why would God's people be told they need to cleanse their hands and purify their hearts? 
Why would God's people that are supposed to be saved, born again, why would they be need to be told that they are sinners? Why is James calling God's people sinners? Without question. Because they are sinners. See, John, uh, James goes on to say that they have become double-minded. In one place it says they actually forgot that they were washed from their sins. That's what happens when you go back into sin, folks. You get double-minded, and you don't even know you're saved anymore. Amen. Well, how many know you can know you're saved? How many know you can know in your heart that you're ready to meet the Lord? Praise God. Nothing worse than seeing God's people with a double-mindedness. Halting between two opinions. You're either saved or you're not saved. What could be more confusing than those today that say they're saved, but they call themselves sinners. What a contradiction. When the Bible says sinners are not going to heaven. Oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're not. You're a sinner on your way to hell. Hello. I said you're a sinner on your way to hell. You got to know the truth to be free. And the truth is, when you're really saved, you're not a sinner anymore. A sinner is someone that commits the sin. Makes excuses for sin. Amen? We're not talking about a godly person that is tempted and fails and sins against God and needs to be washed again. Talking about somebody that thinks that they're always going to sin because they're a sinner and they can't stop sinning. That's not what the blood of Jesus Christ does in the life of the believer. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's what the blood does. Amen. I'm a new creation. How many times you hear that song on this broadcast and you just let it go right by? I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I've been born again, more than a conqueror, that's what I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. I'm not a sinner. Amen. Boy, we could spend a lot of time right here, but this is where most, pe most of God's people are. That can't stop sinning. So there's a way out. And that's what we're going to be looking at. There is a way out, folks. There is deliverance. Jesus said it this way. Do your first works over again. You have left your first love. Do your first works over again. What are those first works? Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Ah. You remember how you first came to Jesus? Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. 
let your laughter. Oh, now we're really seeing the problem. You're not serious. How can someone that is miserable because they're not saved and they say they're saved, but yet they're calling themselves a sinner, how can they be happy? Jesus said to the Laodicean church, you're miserable. That doesn't sound like a saved person to me. Miserable? Naked? Blind? But this is the one that really stands out to me. How can someone that's in the condition James talking about here be laughing? Hmm? You ever meet someone that's laughing all the time? Someone that's always enjoys hearing a joke. Someone that's always constantly needs either someone telling a joke or someone laughing. That's the way the world is. Right? You got those that comedians that have these late night shows that instead of realizing how serious the situation is in our country and how dire it is, they make jokes about it. James says, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. He didn't say the joy he gave you when you first got saved. He says, let your joy, that which you consider to be his joy, because you're still double-minded and think you're still saved and you're still trying to live half in and half out. You haven't fully surrendered to him. And so you got a joy you got a laughter and you want to say it's his. You want to say it came from him. But it's not his joy. And that laughter covers up your sorrow. It covers up the pain. Hello. Many of God's people cover up their condition with laughter. How many know that? But you can't hide the truth from Jesus. Amen? If you're making excuses for sin, you need deliverance. It's just that simple. It's that plain. If you're still sinning, willingly, still sinning, You're not repenting of that, turning from that. You can't be happy. So let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Amen. Praise the Lord, people. Humble yourselves. Amen. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful truth. What a wonderful scripture. If you're having a hard time right now, then this message is for you. Humble yourselves. Amen. In the sight of the Lord. Look at the other side of this, folks. And he will lift you up. Hallelujah. You won't have to try to lift yourself up anymore. That can get really exhausting, can it? Making people think you're happy when you're not happy. Making people believe, making people to think that you're saved when you're not saved. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. A person that's saved is not willfully sinning. I will tell you that. Amen. Those that are in this condition that we're reading here, double-minded, friendship with the world, they spend their time trying to lift themselves up. They have a, a laughter. They have a joy, but it's not his. The joy didn't come from the Lord. You can't have the Lord's joy and continue in sin. You can't walk in pride and have the Lord's joy. You cannot be content resting in the Lord in pride. God hates pride. He resists the proud. Amen? We're in the time right now when the Lord is going to raise some folks up. But you're not going to be raised up in this hour if you don't humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those that are proud those that are in this condition that James is talking about, that say they're saved when they're not saved, that act like they're saved when they're not saved, that are double-minded, this is their condition. They speak evil of one another. Amen. They speak evil of their brother, of their sister. And they condemn their brother. They're, they're not judging in righteous judgment. They're condemning their brother. That's what's going on today. Amen. That's the storm that's inward or that's the result of the storm speaking evil of even your brother or your sister thinking evil about them if you're thinking evil about a brother or sister in the Lord we're not even talking about the world but just thinking evil not talking about thinking evil of your president we're talking about thinking evil of a brother or sister in the Lord then the storm is on the inside, people. Because the scripture says we're to love our brothers and sisters. Brotherly love, people. Amen. If we're not walking in love, we're not saved. Amen. We haven't passed from death unto life if we don't love the brethren. And I'm talking about even brothers and sisters that may have offended us. You still love your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is reconciliation. There is restoration. That's how we're supposed to be different than the world. How many know that? We're supposed to really forgive and love one another. Amen. God knows that we don't always see eye to eye. But do you know what he says to us? Forbear one another in love. You know what that means? It means put up with one another. With the right attitude. Understanding. And knowing. That not one of us. is not human. Not one of us has arrived. Have compassion on one another. Have mercy on one another. Amen. Let the world know that there are some folks on the earth that love one another. It's not just lip service. Praise the Lord. 
We're not supposed to be judging the law, people. If you're judging the law, you're not a doer of the law. You've made yourself a judge. And how many know there's only one judge? Do you know what this is talking about? You've exalted yourself to the place where you don't even care what God thinks anymore. Because you're God. Dear God. What a place to be. Well, you think you're God. Hmm. You know, this actually goes down into a place. I wasn't going to deal with this today, but. How many know when you're in this condition? You're worried about tomorrow. Look, look what James goes on to say. Go to now. You that say today or tomorrow. We will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy, sell, and get gain. James says, if you are in this condition, you don't live one day at a time. You're worried about tomorrow. Listen to what it goes on to say here. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. Yeah, you can be presumptuous. You can presume. You can assume. You can guess. You can worry. You can fear. You can fret. But the truth is, you don't know. What shall be on the morrow? For what is your life? It is even a vapor. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. What is your life but a vapor? Do you live that way? Or do you just take life for granted? Do you see life so precious it's like a vapor? It appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. But this is what James says. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, does anybody care about God's will? If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. You're not saved if you're not living like this. If you're not living like this, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life. You're not saved. If the Lord will. That's why Jesus said, only those that do the will of the Father are going to enter into life. You got to do the will of God. Can't do your own will and be saved. My generation thinks they can be. though. But now rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. And he ends it up by saying these words. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, To him it is sin. What's James summing this up with? You know what to do. You're just not doing it. 
you're putting it off. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it sometime. I have plenty of time. I'll get right with God later. That's what they say. That's the attitude. But we're talking about those that are supposed to be saved. That have gone back to wall in the mire and gone back to the vomit, as it were. Forgot that they were washed. I'll take care of it tomorrow. But you don't know. That's what James is saying. You don't know that you have tomorrow. You don't know. Do it now. Do it today. If you hear his voice today, today, harden not your hearts. Now is the accepted time, people. Now, right now. In the moment. Right now. Amen? You can look at this chapter and see the characteristics of those that think they're saved and they're not even saved. No adulterers, adulteresses are going to heaven. James called them adulterers and adulteresses. Amen? He called them sinners. Double-minded. Unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know what that means? It means he's never consistent. There's no consistency. Amen. This message ought to really drive you to the Lord. Drive you to your knees to the Lord. Are you listening, people? What's it going to take to get you to humble yourself? What's it going to take? What has to happen in your life? You got to lose your home? You got to lose your family? Oh, I feel his presence. What do you have to lose to gain heaven? What are you willing to lose? And you don't have to lose anything. But we allow things to get in the way, don't we? The Lord says, what do you have to lose for me to get your attention? I heard about a sister in the Lord that after years of running from God and resisting God, it was testimony time in the service, and she gave, stood up to give her a testimony. She was missing limbs on her body. She had worked in the factories, and she would had lost limbs in different, th- different ways. She had lost arm, leg. I can't remember what it was now, but she had limbs missing on her body. And she got up and shared her testimony. She said, one day God spoke to her and said, how much more do I got to take to get your attention? You remember what Jesus said in the scripture? It's better to enter into life maimed than to go to hell with all your members. God's not playing games, people. What do you have to lose? What does he have to take to get your attention? Does God have your attention now? (laughs) 
Lord God Almighty. Well, that was a good message, Brother Joseph. Can't wait to the next one. You know, it's like someone standing there chewing gum while somebody's trying to talk to them. Fingers in their ears. It's heartbreaking for a minister to minister to folks that don't get it. They just don't get it. The mentality is, I've got tomorrow. And James is saying, you don't. You're not promised tomorrow. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Now. Do it right now. Don't let the devil distract you. Don't get away from this moment when the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. Hallelujah. Do it now. Hallelujah. Do it right now. Humble yourself. You'll be glad you did. Amen? Do it now. Humble yourself. And he will lift you up. Amen? Let all that laughter be turned to mourning. Afflict yourself. Mourn. Weep. Get real. Really be sorry for your condition. The Lord will lift you up. I hear testimonies all the time of people so-called getting saved. And in, in their testimony, there's no mention that they ever wept over their sin. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, Brother Joseph wept for hours. Hours went by. Hours I wept as God cleansed me as I wept. And God cleansed me. And God cleansed me. The deeper he cleansed me, the more I wept. Amen. And when he was done, I was clean. A new born baby in the Lord. A new creation. Old things were passed away. Amen. I wasn't who I used to be. Amen. It's real, people. Don't let any minister out there tell you it's not real. It's real. You're in a new world when you're saved. You're not in this world anymore. Amen. You're walking in his presence. You're walking in the light. You're walking in the kingdom. Amen. You're walking in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're walking in victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is victory in Jesus. See, there's a way out, folks. But do you want to get out? Do you want to get out of that cycle where you can't quit sinning? Where you can't seem to get free? The devil has ensnared you? Even though the scripture says the snare has been broken, we are escaped, our help comes in the name of the Lord? I don't think there's anything more pitiful than someone that thinks they're saved when they're not. That is pitiful. Trying to live for God at the same time as living in the world. 
and never able to get free. In fact, the scripture said, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Forever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And all they've got to do is humble themselves. And you know what I've learned over the years? I've learned if God does not help you to humble yourself, you can't. And it's as you draw near to God, by the way, you wouldn't draw near to God if he didn't draw you. So if God is drawing you, or I should say it this way, if you feel led, if you're feeling compelled to draw near to God, it's because he's drawing you. Amen. But he wants to embrace you. Like that prodigal. He wants to put his arms around you. Restore you. Amen. You know, Jesus said many would say on that day, Lord, Lord. They think they're saved. Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? And he's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. When the Lord revealed this to me, I'm trying to close. When the Lord revealed this to me, this scripture, that many, he will say, depart from me. I I never knew you. When he revealed this to me in truth, and I understood it, and it was a revelation, and God gave this truth to me. Folks, I want you to understand, I fell on my kitchen floor and wept a puddle of tears because I understood how many people are going to be lost. Deceived. They're being deceived. You know, I think God's people think or have this mentality that God would not allow me to be deceived. It says they were deceived. That's a difficult thing, I think, to get your mind around. They were deceived. What does that mean? If they had known the truth, they would have did something different. But they were deceived. If you think you're saved and you're not saved, you're deceived. You understand what I'm saying to you folks? Jesus said, let no or take heed no man deceive you. That's the number one mark. That's the first mark of the coming of the Lord, the end of the world. Take heed no man deceive you. Amen. Praise the Lord. The overcomer is going to have to overcome deception. Because Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be deceived. Don't be. Don't be deceived. Don't let yourself be deceived. It's not worth spending eternity in hell, people. Not worth it. Going to spend eternity in hell because of pride? How many are going to spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire forever? Forever. Because of pride. Many. Many, not few, many. Lord God. Praise your name, Lord. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do it today. Do it now. the power in the name of Jesus we've got thank you for your support of honest news network in the name of the lord though satan rages we cannot be defeated we've got the power